Hello everybody, Dane here, Biggie there in the background. Um, today I am doing some uh, A's for your Q's. So uh, this is going to double up as part of my radio show. I'm going to be my own guest on my own show, possibly for the 100th episode, we'll see. Um, and so because of that, I couldn't exactly write the questions myself. And so um, I uh, threw it out to you guys. You guys submitted your questions and I'm going to go through them and do some answers. Dane reads... In no particular order, we'll start with this one from Fit To Be Read. He asked, how do you split time between your art and projects? Do you prefer to schedule or is it what you feel in the moment? So this is a kind of a complicated one for me. Uh, I work with something that I call the schedule and basically I divide time into periods of like 45 minutes. So theoretically, it's 15 minutes of computer stuff, 15 minutes of tidying and then 15 minutes of writing. Um, but actually what I tend to do is I do uh, five minutes of each, and then the remaining 30 minutes is split between either filming and editing booktube videos, um, or when I'm doing work, I sort of split into half an hour, and I do 15 minutes of timed stuff where I'm charging by the hour, and then 15 minutes of untimed stuff, because when I'm doing the untimed stuff, that's when I also check my work emails and bid for jobs and all that sort of thing. Um, since moving house, uh, I've basically done a load of tidy time because it was all my unpacking and stuff. So I'm actually, I actually owe like minus a thousand minutes of tidying. Um, but I also owe about five and a half thousand minutes of writing. So you can see what's happened there. I've spent more time tidying than writing. Hence my uh, projects haven't really moved along much this year. I've also spent a lot more time doing work this year just to be able to pay for my house basically. Um, so at the moment, looking at my screen, I owe 2,420 minutes of untimed work and 2,240 minutes of timed work. So that's going to take me probably until Christmas to catch up with that lot. Um, and at the moment I'm catching up with that by instead of doing 45 minute loops, I'm doing 55 minutes. Um, and doing an extra 5 minutes of um, untimed and 5 minutes of timed work each time. And uh, yeah, then I have like a five minute break to uh, vape and read. So that's how I get stuff done. It's kind of a complicated answer, but it's a system I've been using for a while and it works for me. So the bookish report, Alex, he asked, choose one of the following. He actually sent a few. I said I was going to do all of them. So number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock? Phew, that's a, that's a tough one. Probably... I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Stone Cold Steve Austin at the moment. Uh, I've actually read books about both of them, um, although they were both kind of outdated because, for example, The Rocks, uh, his was his memoir, but it was before he really got into acting, so it was mostly about his time with the WWF, as it was at the time, and um, doing, like, college American football. But Stone Cold Steve Austin has just got, like, a great, you know, persona. I mean, he is Stone Cold Steve Austin. If you ever see him, like, outside of the ring just doing interviews and stuff, he's still the same dude. Question number two, how vinegary is too vinegary? I mean, very vinegary. When I was a kid, I once I was putting vinegar on a pizza because that's the kind of person I am. And the lid fell off the vinegar and it just drowned this pizza in vinegar and I still ate it. Um, when I used to get chips from the chip shop and I'd get them in a cone, I'd drown them with vinegar and then there'd be like a little puddle of vinegar at the end, right at the bottom. And then I would drink the vinegar. I love vinegar, it's great. Question number three, you have a lot of experience with independent publishing now. Aside from the actual writing of books, what advice do you have for an aspiring indie author? What is the process? What could they expect? Where they should hire outsource and where could they do things themselves, etc. Okay, so obviously, yeah, aside from the writing of books. So you, you, the main two choices for this, you have uh, Amazon's KDP or Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark costs money, so I would suggest probably going with Amazon KDP um, if you're like on a budget. In terms of what you can do yourself, there's actually not a lot. If you're good at graphic design, you can do a cover, but I would suggest work with a, hire a professional cover designer, hire a professional editor, uh, do those at the very least. You might be able to do the interior layout yourself as long as you're like, really know what you're doing because you want to make sure it's justified, uses nice fonts, looks good inside, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you'll also, for the ebook, there are specific like ways that ebooks are formatted. So you want to hire somebody who knows how to format uh, like a Mobi or an EPUB file. Basically, it's a bit like designing a responsive web page, if you know anything about web design. Um, it just makes sure that the book looks good on all different devices, whether it's a Kindle or a mobile phone or whatever it is. Um, you can probably hire people. I mean, I, I use Upwork to get a lot of my jobs, but I hire people from people per hour because I find that a little bit cheaper. You also might be able to get people quite cheap from Fiverr. Um, yeah. What's the pro process and what you can expect? 
You mean, well, basically, you've got, you finish your first draft, you send it off to your editor, you probably want to do at least three passes with your editor if you can afford it. Uh, it doesn't come cheap, but, I mean, you're not going to make any money back on your books as well. That's what to expect. But, yeah, three passes with your editor, um, and you do your rewrites, etc. Then you're want, going to want to give it one last proofread. You can probably do that yourself or with beta readers or with a friend or something like that. Uh, then you want to get it sent to layout ready for the print version and the ebook versions. Get your cover design sorted and then you can pretty much go from there. You're going to want to get a proof copy printed and shipped to you to make sure it looks okay. And um, yeah, you're probably going to want to do some marketing and stuff as well, like uh, cover reveals and all that kind of stuff before the book actually goes live. And yeah, what to expect? You're not going to make any money. You're going to lose money. Uh, for me, it's a bit like music. Like I've earned music uh, money from music here and there by doing gigs and stuff, but it doesn't pay for all of the instruments and all the gear and all the travel and all that kind of stuff. At best, it offsets it, you know. And I found books to be pretty similar. Um, but for me, because I freelance as a writer, my books allow me to charge more by the hour, so they kind of pay for themselves that way. Question number four: What are your thoughts on publishing a short story that will be part of a collection that will be published at a later date, like releasing a single off an upcoming album? Yeah, sure, go for it. Um, especially if you've got like that kind of hungry audience that wants it. Um, I've also done this the other way, so I've had um, stories that have gone out in anthologies that have then been in my own short story collections. The only thing to do is like check the contract, make sure that you are allowed to do that. Um, if you're just releasing a short story of your own that you're later gonna publish in a collection, yeah, go ahead and do it. I would just say, try and include some sort of call to action with that short story, so maybe try and get people to sign up to a mailing list or something like that so that if they read the short story and enjoy it, you can then promote the book to them once it's out. Okay, question from Big Hard Books and Classics. He sent a couple as well. Uh, who is your favorite horror author and why? Well, that's easy, that's Stephen King. You just can't beat Stephen King. I mean, he's one of the, the just the best authors in general, I think. Sure, like, he's not always amazing. Sometimes he, like, fluffs the ending and, and things like that. Um, but just in terms of a mixture of quality and quantity, Stephen King is the man. And question number two, when are we creating our next Bob Dylan cover and which song shall it be and why? So me and Al from Big Hard Books and Classics, we do a few online collaborations where I play guitar and sing and he plays mouth organ. So I mean, it's gotta be something with uh, mouth organ. To be honest, I can't remember which ones we've done so far. Um, but I'm gonna say what I would love to do would be um, uh, The Man In Me because I've, I've been really enjoying that song recently. So Too Tight Lautrec has asked, do you have creative doldrums? And if so, how do you kick yourself out of it slash them? Or do you just relax and rest up until you're ready to work again? Um, I'm a workaholic, so I never really rest. Um, the closest I come to resting is working, but at least I'll be sitting down. Um, I guess I do have creative doldrums. I'm kind of in the middle of one now. I've started writing this book um, that's going to be set in my hometown of Tamworth. Kind of, it's kind of a coming of age novel, set when and where I came of age, you know? Um, and it's just a hard one to write. Um, so to be honest, I've just been putting off writing that. Um, but normally I'm working on so many projects that if I have creative doldrums about one project, I just move on and work on something else, you know, and then come back to it later and, it, and it's fine. Uh, Ms. Reads A Lot says, what unread book has been on your shelf the longest? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna check my Goodreads for this. Okay, so it's uh, Christopher Vogler's The Writer's Journey, Mythic Structure for Writers, which I will be getting to soon. It's just a non-fiction book about the art of writing. That's kind of why I've been putting it off, you know? Although I think Goodreads, it sorts not, not necessarily by the time I put them on my shelves, but by the date I added them to my want to read list. Because uh, the next one up is Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway. And I picked that up like two weeks ago at a charity shop. But it says here, the date added for the writer's journey, June the 23rd, 2013. So I should get to that soon, really. And Ms. Reads a lot also asks, what's your favorite book of all time? That is uh, Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. I actually have a tattoo of Yorick Bernison, the armored bear. And uh, yeah, it's just the book that made me fall in love with reading. I actually gave it to my friend Sabrina recently because uh, she hasn't read it. And you know, she should read it. Uh, Al from Big Heart Books and Classics, he has another question. Robert McCallman should get talked more about on Booktube, do you agree? No, I mean, I've never read him, so I, I can't say I care. Um, maybe, I, I don't know. I'm sure people out there are talking about it, and that's the good thing about Booktube. So for those of you who are listening to this on the radio as opposed to watching on YouTube, Booktube is like a YouTube community of people who make videos talking about books. They share what they're currently reading, reviews, book hauls, all that sort of thing. Um, but the good thing about booktube is that you can find people talking about pretty much whatever authors you're interested in, you know? Uh, here we have Zoe, she asked, what's your top five Goosebumps books and why? Okay, 
Well, I'm just going to go with the first five that come into my head. Um, my favourite one is probably the Masked Mutant, or Attack of the Mutant is called, sorry. Um, and uh, this is basically it's just the one I read the most. I had a lot of nightmares about it when I was a kid. Um, it's about this, this young lad who uh, discovers that one of his favourite superheroes and supervillains is actually real. And it's kind of interesting that that one ranks highly for me because I normally don't like superhero stuff and I'm not a fan of like Marvel and that kind of thing. Uh, another one would be A Night at Terror Tower, and um, this has like, got a bit of time travel in it, um, kind of Tower of London vibes. Uh, this actually inspired the story that I wrote called Not in Tamworth Anymore for the We're Not Home anthology, edited by Cam Wolf, which is out now, so go and read that. Uh, what else is up there? Um, the Curse of Camp Nightmare, or whatever it's called. Welcome to Camp Nightmare, I think it's called. Uh, again, these are all basically the ones I read as a kid. I, I found that a lot with reading uh, Goosebumps recently as an adult. Basically, it's the nostalgia that makes them, so it's the ones that I read as a kid that I enjoy the most. And uh, that one, I guess I liked as well because uh, it was like my first ever exposure to like American uh, summer camp uh, culture. Then there's probably Say Cheese and Die about a haunted camera. Just used to freak me out. I, I still don't particularly like having my photo taken and it could well be because of that. And then probably the other one is... Um, um, Probably Piano Lessons Can Be Murder, or the one, the, the title I can't remember at the moment, about the, the librarian who was a monster. One of those two. Uh, Zoe also asked, who's your favourite author of all time? So that's a very difficult question. I don't know if I can give you one favourite author. Um, my top five are probably Agatha Christie, uh, Stephen King, Graham Greene, Philip Pullman and Charles Bukowski, maybe? Oh, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to choose just, just five of you. Uh, Zoe also asked, what other books would you like to collect? So, I used to collect all of the books that I'd read. Now I don't do that. I chuck them up on eBay just to kind of keep cycling through them and make sure that I have room for more books. So I don't know if there's any particular books I would like to collect. Eventually, I probably will work on my book collection and get some really nice editions of like all of the Stephen King books, all of the Discworld books, all of the Agatha Christie books. Um, but you know, that's expensive and seeing as that even if I do reread them, I'll probably reread them via audiobook anyway, it's kind of low priority for me. Zoe also asked, what's a book that's underrated but you think deserves much attention? Um, Meat by Dane Cobain. This is my novel set on a factory farm. Um, the animals revolt basically and it's very heavily grounded in what actually goes on at factory farms. It's the book that turned me into a vegan from doing all the research for it. Um, and I just think it's the best thing I've ever written. Todd the Librarian on YouTube also said it's one of the best horror novels he's ever read and that is a big compliment because he the man reads Stephen King. Carmela Maig asked what's your top five books of all time? So I guess for this I'm just going to go back to my top five authors and choose one book by each of them. So obviously we have uh, Philip Pullman, Northern Lights. Uh, for Terry Pratchett, my favourite Terry Pratchett book is probably Feet of Clay. Um, which is like a murder mystery city watch book with a golem in it um, And it's just because it's one of the first Discworld books that I read and one that I've read the most times And also I love the city watch books For Graham Greene It is probably The Quiet American or Our Man in Havana Probably Our Man in Havana um, That's one of his entertainments as opposed to what he called his serious novels uh, Kind of espionage based set in Havana uh, Following a vacuum cleaner salesman called Mr. Vermold and uh, I also saw a play version of it once as well, which was great. I went by myself because nobody would go with me. For Stephen King, it's The Stand, even though I've recently got a new tattoo uh, from It. But it's because It has a lot more visual imagery. It was kind of hard to think of something from The Stand that I could get as a tattoo. And It is probably my second favourite of his, to be fair. And then Agatha Christie. Probably And Then There Were None is my favourite of hers, um, even though it doesn't feature Poirot. I actually prefer Miss Marple to Poirot anyway, so that could also be, be part of the reason why. And finally, one last question from Zoe. She asked, do you play video games? I do not play video games. I used to when I was younger. Uh, if I do now, which is very, very rarely, and usually if I've had a few beers, um, I'd be like retro gaming, playing Super Nintendo games on an emulator. Um, yeah, I used to play some of those like point and click games. I guess I play like Bloons Tower Defense 5 and chess on my phone as well. I watch a lot of people on YouTube playing uh, video games. Um, and so that's kind of how I get my video game fixed these days. 
Um, I just don't have time to do it myself. Also, back in the day, I was like top 5,000 RuneScape players, and uh, eventually I sold my account and all of my gold for like 2,000 pounds, which is like two and a half thousand dollars, even though it was against their terms of service. So probably shouldn't be saying this in a public forum. So there we have it. Those are the answers to the questions that you lot asked. Thanks so much for everybody who sent in their questions. As I say, this will also be going on my radio show and be uh, played locally and also available live online, catch up, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any more questions, let me, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll answer some more, I guess. Hit that subscribe button if you like this video. Hit that like button, etc. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.